cell culture just means growing cells. There are certain basic nutrients that all cells need, just the same way that we all need to eat food. But certain specialised cells will also need specialised conditions. We provide them with nutrients and the conditions they need just to keep them happy and, and all that taken together is what we call cell culture. One of the biggest problems we have when we grow cells is the danger that they could get contaminated. Unfortunately, the nutrients and the nice conditions which are perfect for growing cells are also perfect for growing bacteria. Once it gets into a tissue culture dish, it can grow very, very quickly and within a day or two will completely overtake the culture and eventually kill our cells. As long as we're careful, we don't lose many cells to contamination. But when it does happen, it can be really frustrating. That can be many weeks of work completely lost. Everything that ever comes into contact with the cells is very clean and sterile. Even the air that the cells are exposed to needs to be filtered to remove bacteria. Once something's come into contact with the cells or come into contact with the air, we throw it away or re-sterilise it. We don't reuse things. The way that we look at the cells to see if they're healthy, there are sophisticated tests that you can do, but the main way really is just looking at them by eye down the microscope. When you've worked with them for several months, you can very quickly tell if they have a problem. Embryonic stem cells have a natural ability to change, to differentiate into specialised cell types. And if we want to keep them growing as unspecialised embryonic stem cells, we need to find ways of restraining that natural tendency. But we can do this because we can control the environment the cells are exposed to. We can use special chemicals. These are the body's own natural chemicals, which have the effect of telling the cells to remain as unspecialised embryonic stem cells and stop them from changing. And this is really useful for us. In fact, it's the critical thing that allows us to grow embryonic stem cells in culture. Now, of course, there are also times where we want to change the embryonic stem cells into more specialised cell types. We try and find different conditions or different chemicals which will guide the cells to change in the direction that we want. So the way that we work out what these conditions are is uh, part just trial and error, but we can also get clues by looking at the tissues that these cells would normally reside in and working out what the local environment is. We just have to try lots of different things, we have to do lots of experiments, and when we do see a condition that seems to do what we want to the cells, it's important to keep repeating that to check that that effect can be reliably used over and over again. When we're trying to turn stem cells into particular cell types, one problem is knowing when we've actually been successful in making the type we're interested in. You might think that you can identify just by looking. It's true that different cell types do have characteristic shapes, so neurons will be very long and thin, for example. Some cell types you really can't identify by eye. We try and make use of characteristic proteins. For example, a pancreatic cell will make the protein insulin, so if we can detect insulin in a cell, that gives us a big clue that we've managed to successfully make a cell from the pancreas. So what we're trying to do more and more these days is to find ways of identifying the cell types while the cells are still growing in culture. One thing we can do is make use of a special protein, which is a fluorescent protein. This is a protein that wouldn't normally be found in the cell, but it's completely harmless. So we take the gene that codes for that fluorescent protein and put it into the cell's own DNA in such a way that it only gets switched on and starts making this glowing protein when the stem cell turns into that particular cell type.
So this is really useful because it means not only can we identify, but we can also purify them because we can use special machines which can detect the fluorescent cells and pull them away from the other cells so we end up with a pure population of the specialised cell type. With cell culture, what we find is that cells can not only survive and grow, but retain the characteristics they have in the body. And this means that we can directly observe how the cells behave, how they respond to their environments. And this really gives us a direct insight into how these cells decide what they're going to do. And this is what I think is really fascinating. <laughs>